Hey guys, it's Israel again, back with Heavy Metal Reptiles. And today, we are talking about... Hey, hey come here, Lilith, right there. There you go. We have Lilith out today. Um, we're talking about five challenging reptiles to keep. Uh, the reason we have Lilith out today is, is anyone who's watched the videos from the past might have seen the care guide I think we did. If it was a care guide, or if it was just introducing Lilith, or what it was. Um, but we did something with Lilith in it, and then Lilith just disappeared. Now, there was a reason to why Lilith disappeared, and we'll put pictures up. I have a before picture here, and an after picture here. Um, she got a bump on her lip, and we didn't know what it was from. Uh, we didn't know what caused it. We talked to a bunch of people, we tried to take her to the vet, and pretty much we uh, couldn't get any answers. Everybody just wanted to cut her open or, you know, this or that, and nothing really uh, conclusive. So I started treating it like an infection, and as you can see, once the videos are up, there's still a tiniest bit of a bump there, but it's virtually gone now. Uh, I just didn't want her in the video at all because it looked bad. Like I said, we'll put a picture of it. It looked bad. Um, I just didn't want you guys to not understand and think that I'm like, is she like trying to eat? Mm -hmm. Come here. Hey. Well, one sec, Lilith, you crazy. Okay, one second. One second. I can't give you too many of these. Look, right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. Um, I just didn't want you guys to think that like we wasn't taking care of her or something because it was like that for a while and we had no clue what was going on. So that is just kind of the reason why we uh, hadn't had her in a video. And well, you got its head. And I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys today since we had her out. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Like I said, five challenging reptiles to keep. So number five is sulcata tortoises. Um, the reason that we're, or the way I, I kind of come up with this list is through the enclosure that they're going to need and temperatures and how hard it's going to be to reach these temperatures throughout the enclosure and substrate and all this other, you know, all the normal care for for animals. So, as my notes say, <laughs> a sulcata tortoise actually needs an 80 square foot enclosure. That is what the they recommend for a sulcata tor tortoise. Um, from what I understand, this is one of the biggest tortoises you can actually keep as a pet. Don't quote me on that because I didn't go far into that part of the research because it wasn't necessarily important for the, the video. But their daytime temperature is supposed to be between 77 and 95 degrees, which that big of a difference is just in and of itself going to be easy to get but might be hard over such a big enclosure. Their hot spot is 122 degrees is what they need. Which we haven't had a 120 degree day in where I live since like I was like eight. <laughs> like it was a long time ago. I think they even shut down schools that day because they didn't want kids on buses. So, I mean, that's a, that's a high basking spot. It's just the, yeah. So at night, they're able to get down to around 63 degrees and above. You shouldn't let them be below 63 degrees at night, but they can take that temperature drop there at night. Like I said, the reason I'm saying these guys are going to be challenging is the enclosure size, their diet. Their diet is going to be pretty similar to every other turtle, tortoise, you know, lettuce and, and their, their vegetables and, and stuff like that. But they're going to eat a lot more than your normal box turtle or smaller like a red toed a red toe turtle tortoise is that what they're called something like that the, sm the smaller tortoises teenier tortoise um they're going to eat more than they do so there's going to be quite a bit of upkeep as far as feeding them cleaning the cage 
regulating temperatures. I didn't get humidities for any of these, I don't think. Uh, I know some of them just because I've done a lot of research into them, but I don't think when I did the research for this video that I actually got humidity, so that was dumb on my part. Uh, but I would imagine they do have a moderate to higher humidity, so and that might be harder to achieve depending on where you are. I mean, you're talking, these guys aren't going to be able to go in an aquarium. You're going to need an actual, like, tortoise pen for it. Don't bite my arm. You know what I mean? So, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, so this next one is going to be a lychee gecko, or a lychianus gecko, or a giant gecko, whatever name you prefer. Um, personally, I want one of these. Again, with these guys, is going to be more of the enclosure size and hard to regulate temperature for them is going to be your big, I think, challenge with them. So... Alicianus gecko roughly gets the size of my forearm. I didn't write down their sizes. I think they average around a foot, it, it, tail size and all. Uh, don't quote me on that because, like I said, I didn't write down the sizes of these animals, which I should have. Um, but they, they get a pretty decent size. So how you can keep, like, our uh, crusted gecko, our adult crusted gecko, I think is in a 24 inch tall enclosure and your Lichianus geckos are going to need something more like a 4 to 5 foot tall enclosure would be like what I recommend personally. Uh, I know a lot of people do the 45 gallon tanks or 55 gallon tanks on their side and then put the glass um, conversion kits on them which seems to work for everyone that I've seen that's, that does do it. Um, but when you're talking that amount of uh, uh, height, you're going to need, for me at least, I would recommend having multiple different thermometers and hydrometers in there to make sure you're hitting the proper temperatures and humidity, especially with as expensive as these things are. You don't want to screw up and kill a thing. I mean, I want one, but I'm poor. I can't do that. So, with that being said, their temperature is between 75 to 80 degrees. Common, you know, knowledge says heat rises. So, like I said, if you're keeping them in a, in a three foot tall enclosure, I would personally be regulating the bottom and the top of the enclosure. You're going to see them more at the top, but you will see them on the bottom of the enclosure from time to time. So, like I said, that's going to be your biggest challenge is trying to keep temperatures and humidity right with them. So, we're going to go ahead and move on to number three. So, number three, anacondas. Those are going to be an extremely challenging reptile to keep. You want to know why? I bet you can't guess. They're freaking massive, and their enclosures are freaking massive. They're just massive, everything about them. Even their food. Anacondas require a lot of water. They are mainly water species, but they do need land also. So, enclosure size. Big. Big. That's just trying to think the average anaconda is between 17 to like 24 feet long I think is average you want like a 40 yeah so 40 <laughs> if your your anaconda is about adult you would like a 40 gallon to 45 gallon breeder tank and you fold them a little bit and jiggle them down and they're fit don't worry about it. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. Uh, you're you're probably going to want, like, again, this comes down to the kind of keeper you are. If you want to be a good keeper, okay, I always say a foot longer than the snake. With these guys, 
not only are you going to need a foot longer, but you're also going to need about 10 feet tall because you're going to want probably a four to five foot water display in there with them, along with probably eight feet deep would be good. I didn't write down enclosure size because I literally was getting like the 40 gallon enclosure and this and that for anacondas. I couldn't really find anything on adults other than you're going to have to build one. So I would say like a, a 10 or 8 to 10 foot deep. That way you have plenty of room for the water and you've got plenty of room for the land because they are going to need the, the land still. Uh, another thing that's going to make them extremely challenging is food. So. You can't just feed an anaconda a rat every week and say, good. They're going to eventually get to a size where you're going to have to feed them chickens and baby pigs and what else have I seen people feed them? I've seen them, yeah, rabbits, jackrabbits, big jackrabbits. I mean, they, they, they can get big really quick. I've actually seen people eat, actually feed them foxes too. Uh, they get big, you know, and you've got to be ready to take care of the, the feeding, the enclosure, and the temperature served with the, as big an as enclosure as they're going to need. They're also going to need 80 to 90 degrees for a hot spot. So your residual temperature is probably going to be between 70 to 80 degrees, and the whole cage can drop down to 70, 75 at night. Um, but... Lilith, you're active, and I'm extremely happy about that, but you're supposed to be my my special guest star. Come here. No? Okay. Um, okay. But, I mean, those temperatures aren't insane, but they are going to be harder to make sure over that big of a space that they are achieved. So we're going to go ahead and move on to number two. Okay, number two is the American Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, I'm just playing. Number two is caimans and alligators. Depending on where you live depends on if these things are even legal for you to keep. I do not recommend them for a pet, period, at all. Caimans and alligators are literally for the most extreme keepers there are, pretty much, or someone that's equipped for them, like a zoo. Um, or like the people at Snake Discovery that's got their, uh, I don't know if it's a zoo or what it is, but they've got the reptile display they have at their uh, store. You know, uh, something like that is going to be your setup for anyone who's going to want to keep these. You're going to want resources like that and stuff. So, caiman don't normally get that big. Alligators can reach six feet long, uh, up to eight feet long I believe so that might be exaggerated a little bit no they can reach eight feet long I'm not sure it's between six and eight feet long anyways they're a big lizard okay they, they came and don't get as big but they're snappy they have bad attitudes and they eat quite a bit when they eat because they don't eat daily I don't believe do they eat daily? they don't eat daily they can't eat daily. No, they don't eat daily. I don't know. This isn't a food guide. I'm just saying. Uh, they are a challenging reptile, though, when it comes to their food, their substrate, their enclosure. Which we didn't even talk substrate with anacondas. But they are challenging when it comes to the, the, the main categories of keeping a reptile. Um, you're talking 84 to 93 degrees residual heat. Um... You're definitely going to want a basking spot. I couldn't really find any type of um, um, temperature requirements for the basking spot. But you're definitely going to want to have a basking spot for both these animals. Naturally, they like to sit out in the sun. They use the water to regulate their temperature, uh, internal temperatures. So you're definitely going to want a basking spot for them. Their cages are about 8 foot long, 4 foot wide, 6 foot high. four foot wide, like deep, 
might be like an undershot. Like you should probably up that. But that's kind of what people were recommending for him. And I guess Cayman would be fine, but an alligator, you're definitely going to want something bigger than that. And again, that comes down to regulating your temperatures, especially if, okay, so if they want 84 degrees as a minimal, you know, throughout the whole cage, you have to make sure you're keeping consistent of 84 or higher. So it, it, they get tricky, you know, and in the summertime here and where I live, you could have them outside, but majority of the time they're going to be inside and you're going to have to be equipped to deal with that. Again, alligators are going to need a big water feature. Cayman are going to need a big water feature. They spend a lot of time in the water. So, yeah, kind of my right now. Then we'll go ahead and move on to number one. So number one is reticulated pythons. The reason reticulated pythons are at the, the number one at this list is because A, I'm tired of seeing them in way too small in enclosures uh, to where they can't even hardly. <laughs> really? <laughs> the whole reason I didn't get Zoom out earlier was because he was biting me. <laughs> she did it so nice and slow. Well, she didn't even bite me. I just felt you know, her mouth go just... around me and I moved so she wouldn't. <laughs> Cause she latched on me the one day and that was probably the most stressful thing in the world for her. I didn't even know you latched until that day. Okay. You goofy Keep. lizard. Anyways, now that you guys got to see. Okay, why is it that none of these things bite me until I'm on camera and then they turn into vicious Satanist? Anyways, what? Anyways, reticulated pythons. The reason these guys are a challenging animal, like I was saying, is because I'm tired of seeing them in such small enclosures. It doesn't seem like anybody has any type of good way to keep them. Okay, so, reticulated pythons are known to get over 20 feet long, or at least, you know, minimal is like 17 feet. So, 17 foot, 280 pound, Reticulated python needs to be in something bigger than an eight foot by two foot by two foot tall enclosure. They need to be in much bigger enclosures, but for whatever reason, all these people want to keep them in these small enclosures. I don't get it. I don't know why. Some of these people need slap because I've seen them in enclosures that they can't even stretch out in. I've also seen them in boxes that they can't stretch out in. Like, four by four boxes. There's a guy all over YouTube that keeps them in, in enclosures that they can't even get a drink of water if they want to get a drink of water. I'm not going to name names, but he's very famous and he has a zoo in California. What'd you do? You better not be cutting anything out. Anyways, they require, like I said, 17 foot is like a minimal. So if you've got the minimal length reticulated python, you need an 18 foot long enclosure. I would like to see a 10 foot deep enclosure for a 17 foot snake. And at least for comfort's sake for the snake, this can vary because they aren't arboreal, but three to four foot tall would be ideal. Uh, and that might be a little, little tall, but I'd rather go big than not enough. And of course a front opening enclosure also. They need 80 degrees during the daytime to 94 degrees somewhere in there uh, again when you're talking big enclosures that's hard to regulate um, at night 75 to 80 degrees that's going to be pretty easy to achieve if you're achieving daytime temperatures and just letting that slowly come down through the night and then about the time you're bringing it back up during the day or for the daytime it'll play out pretty easily um, again, though, substrate, I know a lot of people keep them on newspapers and, and things like that. Neither here nor there. It, that's kind of whatever. Um, but if you're using substrate, you know, you're going to have a lot of money in substrate and things with that stuff. And, and you're going to have a hard time finding what really works for them and things. Um, they're going to need a, a decent size amount of water, but that's for them to be able to soak in when they need it. And... Uh, to get a drink and things, which they aren't really known for soaking from what I know about them, 
but they definitely are going to need that option. Most of your python species do soak. So, I don't know if uh, this video has really helped you guys. Like I said, I put retakes at the top of this list as the hardest animal to keep because I don't feel that there's very many people out there right now that I've personally seen keeping them properly. They say it's because of comfort reasons or whatever it may be. Um, I just feel like a 17 foot long snake shouldn't be kept in an 8 foot box. Um, so, I mean, take from this video what you will. It was more of like a, a fun thing and an informational thing at the same time. Like I said, I'm just sick of seeing these retics in such small enclosures. I personally want a retic, but I won't get one until I'm ready to keep it in the proper size enclosure. So, anyways, normal outro. Heavy metal reptiles on everything. Links are in the bio. Like I say, reach out to me. Let me know how I can make the videos better. If that means letting Lilith bite me again on camera, then so be it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, reach out to me. Let me know how I can make the videos better. And maybe let me know about some videos you guys would personally like to see. Some informational videos or uh, maybe a list like this that you guys would like to see. And we'll get it done and do the research on it and get it out to you guys. Um... Yeah, rock on friends. See you in the next one.